and I'm gonna place my hands on my heart, close my eyes, take that breath of love and gratitude. Just resting in that heart space, allowing ourselves to drop in to where peace resides always. Grateful for our open hearts, our open minds, for our willingness to allow life to flow through us, for our willingness to be open to receive the all good from the life that we appear to be experiencing here. Letting go of any sense of resistance or reluctance. Just breathing into that space where peace abides and we are unbotherable and we are not affected. We do not lose our seat by what is happening around us or what appears to be happening around us. We call upon all earthly and heavenly helpers. We ask them to surround and support us, to bless this call, to fill us with joy to bring clarity and curiosity and playfulness into our lives. <clears throat> We're grateful to be willing to be open receivers, to accept the all good of, of God and all blessings. And we're grateful to share the all good <clears throat> to share all blessings and the love that we are and the oneness that we are with everyone because we are one. In grace and gratitude, we let it be. And so it is. Amen. Linda, that was so beautifully meditative. Oh, thank you, Robin. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it really helps when I get to do yoga before I come to class. <laughs> so um, today we're uh, in continuing in chapter 26, um, section four, where sin has left. Whoops, tip in my computer here. And I'm going to... Uh, start us with paragraph two, which I feel kind of um, adds to that meditative, peaceful space that the prayer began in where we find the peace of God. Uh, paragraph two and the first couple sentences of paragraph three. Forgiveness turns the world of sin into a world of glory, wonderful to see. Each flower shines in light and every bird sings of the joy of heaven. There is no sadness and there is no parting here for everything is totally forgiven. And what has been forgiven must join for nothing stands between to keep them separate and apart. The sinless must, must perceive that they are one for nothing stands between to push the other off. And in the space that sin left vacant, 
do they join as one in gladness, recognizing what is part of them has not been kept apart and separate. The holy place on which you stand is but the space that sin has left. And here you see the face of Christ arising in its place. And that just, it just brings so much peace to my heart. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So who, who else would like, uh, go ahead, Carla. Kathleen, yes. To that question. Okay. <laughs> so I can't, I can't. I have a phone, so but I'm I I know this is a way to highlight stuff, but I haven't figured it out yet. So it's on chapter or, or paragraph one, and I don't know which line next to the last nine, whatever that is, it says forgiveness thus becomes the means by which he learns he has done nothing to forgive. Forgiveness, this is the line really went. Forgiveness always rests upon the one who offers it until he sees, until he sees himself as needing it no more. And so I, I read a lot of this is a lot about sin and forgiveness. And so I this is what there's several things I wrote, but <clears throat> that sin is lack of love. Lack of love is lack of light. Lack of light is darkness. Darkness is lack of love. So I think we're here to experience this life and realizing the truth that we're having these experiences, we're having interactions, we're having relationships, all sorts of things, experience after experience. And to realize that they're just experiences. Until we realize that love is all that's real. So, ego is telling me, but I'm not going to listen. I don't know why. Sometimes I feel prompted to, to read the stuff. I don't know why. I just do it. So, the, you know, these are two fairly short poems I wrote like five years ago, but they really go hand in hand, so I'm going to read both of them. First one is going home. Sometimes, sometimes I hear it, the melody, the singing in my heart. And sometimes I don't. Sometimes I forget, get distracted. But it sings on. The thinking mind thinks, analyzes. But the song never stops. It sings on, calling me home. I can only be distracted for so long until I remember I hear the call again and go home. That's the forgiveness and to realize that there is nothing to forgive for the other one. Song. The song of life, the song of love sings to me, to all. It dances in me, soars in my heart. It has no boundaries. It is everything. And everything is it. It is the tune of infinite oneness. 
and there is nowhere it isn't. It calls me forth and welcomes me home. Forgiveness seems like it's really that letting go, but it's love too. It's remembering who we are. Thank you. Thank you, Carla. And that reminds me too that um, that there is so much healing in song, in music, in singing, in dancing. Um, there has been so much intensity in the world, it seems, as late. And um, many people that I have spoken to and in my own life, there have been things that have been happening that I have, I feel so much resistance towards, you know, that, that line that this should not be happening seems to play over and over and over in my head. And I can allow myself to get caught up in that or I can decide I'm going to interrupt the pattern. And one of the ways that I do that, that I consider a huge part of my spiritual practice is music. If I just turn some music on and if I'm feeling sad or in despair, I will play music that reflects that. And I will just I'll listen to it. I will cry. I will roll around on the floor writhing just the way my feelings are. Um, if I'm feeling sad, sometimes I'll put happy music on. And before I know it, I'm singing at the top of my lungs to it, or I'm dancing around the house like a crazy person. Music, vibration, the sound of our own voices are so powerful in our healing. So I encourage you, I mean, he's talking about that here about the music, allow yourself to use music because it's a magnificent tool for us to get to a place where we are unbotherable, where we don't have, um, problems of any kind where we don't have uh, where we don't allow the seeming things that are happening around us to allow us to lose our seat to to come out of balance and to disconnect from our source so Saskia and then Carol. Um, just wanting to mention that uh, I find humming very healing and soothing and cl clears the mind. Somehow, if you're humming, you don't have space for <laughs> thoughts. So, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome, Saskia. And yeah, and my my um, drumming instructor, Jim Donovan, he uses humming as uh, a, again another method to um, heal. It's uh, humming and singing. The sound of our voice, the vibration of our voice, um, energizes our vagus nerve our central nervous system and calms us, calms the beast. <laughs> yeah, thank you for that reminder. Go ahead, Carol. Uh, can you all hear me? Because I'm on my iPad, I'm not sure about the volume. Yep, it's but I just want to quickly mention, I don't have a large library of spiritual music, but a, a few years ago, Carla, I don't even know whether it was an email, 
but she mentioned two songs by this artist called Kirtana. And I don't know if you are familiar with her. She's lovely. Her music is very, very meditative and contemplative, very much given to um, um, meditation. So I have two, I have two CDs of hers because Carla mentioned two songs, Why the Sufis Whirl and The Train Song. And they're on two different albums. Well, I love those albums so much. My husband gave me the, the whole book of all her work and the words to all of her stuff because I do play the guitar very reluctantly, but I do. And um, all the way down here, it's a two and a half hour trip. I just listened and I cried because it touches her words, touch my heart so deeply I would encourage anyone who desires that type of music. It's not upbeat dance music. It's not. It's very contemplative, slow, quiet, soft, but so beautiful. So I'm just wanting to mention that because it's touched me so much. Um, I only have those two. Oh, how to spell her name? Um, K I R T, like Kirtan, like Kirtan Kriya. K-I-R-T-A-N-A, -A, Kirtana. And I found out, somebody told me Kirtan means, um, I guess, contemplation, meditation. I mean, it's sacred stuff. That, so that's what her music is. And I guess she's renamed herself. She's a lovely blonde woman. Um, but it's just, you're welcome, Melita. Um, it's just so lovely. You can get her stuff on YouTube. Um, Laurel already tapped into that to, to hear the song. So before you even buy any of her stuff, you can go to YouTube and hear it. So didn't mean to take up a lot of time, sorry. Thank you, Carol. Yeah, I love Spotify because I can, I can get all kinds of music from that, from the spiritual stuff from Kirtana and others to, you know, the seventies metal <laughs> that I listened to as a kid. Um, because sometimes it calls for Kirtana and sometimes ACDC is the ticket. <laughs> yeah. Who else would like to uh, share? Or has anybody, go ahead, Leslie. Hi, everyone. I'm so sorry I missed your prayer. I actually had time to be a few minutes early and I have a new keyboard and I couldn't figure out how to turn the sound up. <laughs> but then I'll re-listen to it on the replay. So I'm, I'm sure it was wonderful. I, I just wanted to mention the line in paragraph four, line number three. It just says, no one is lost and none is cherished more than any other. And I just like that line because whenever I feel inconvenienced by someone, that line just reminds me or reminded me that it's not just all about me. <laughs> you know, there's other, I'm part of the tapestry of life. So just like when my mom was trying to sell her house, I remember saying to her, well, the right person isn't ready to buy your house yet. As soon as that person is ready, then it'll sell, which it did. And I know we we were supposed to have a guy come out for something with the house on Friday. And he called Scott and said, oh, I'm going to be a little late. And then he never showed up. So we're like, oh my gosh, first of all, I hope, I hope the guy's okay, you know. And I guess I'm just mentioning this because I mean, he, he never did show up and Monday, nobody showed up in any way. The guy's been here and left and it was all perfect because I wasn't available on Friday or Monday, but today I was home so I could be involved in everything and got, and I was just so glad that I didn't get all in a tizzy about it. I really did not lose my peace at all. I'm just like, well, he didn't show up. <laughs> it's not the end of the world. We pray that he's okay. And let's just see how it all unfolds. And, and that line is just like, you know, no one is more cherished. No, none is cherished more than any other. I mean, really, we really are one. We really are equal. It, it's just, 
I'm so grateful to have so much more faith than I used to have. It's just, it's great. And to finish my story, Grace, for you from last week, you, uh, I told you all about the un, unexpected expense of our furnace and how the guy, the warranty guy was there three days before. And, and now mind you, remember a few weeks ago, I'm like, I'm committed. I'm having a holy relationship with my brother-in-law, Bob, no matter what, I'm having a holy relationship with him. Well, do you know what? My sister told him about this furnace thing. He got on the internet. I didn't, she didn't ask him to do it. I didn't ask him to do it. He got on the internet. He found the part number. He caught his buddy at work, does furnaces for 20 years. He called his buddy. His buddy came out, saved us $300. Can you believe that? All because I was willing to have a holy relationship with the man. And now I can't wait for Thanksgiving to see him. And, and I mean, I sent him a text and thanked him. And he's just like, oh, it's nothing. You know, it's fine. And, and it's just, it's just so neat to watch the Holy Spirit work, isn't it? It's fun. It's so fun. So I just wanted to share the ending of that story. I mean, it still costs us money, but still it was saved us 300 bucks. And, and I was just ready to have the guy come back, you know? So it's just neat when I, I didn't ask him to do anything. My sister Kelly didn't ask him to do, he totally did it on his own. Thank you, God. That's it. That's awesome, <laughs> Leslie. Thank you so much. <laughs> Great. I mean, does other people have this kind of stuff happening? Everybody needs to share these things. <laughs> <laughs> miracles happen every day. Yes. <laughs> I've been keeping track of my miracles this year in a book. And I'm like on the third page. I'm just like, <laughs> gosh, it's so, it's just so fun. <laughs> I love it, Leslie. Keep those stories rolling in. <laughs> because as, you know, as Carol says, this is what is living the Course in Miracles. And this is evidence that you're gathering um on the way so yeah hey yay for brothers um i've got four brothers and i always used to complain because they're absolutely no use at no no i'll change that they if i want gossip from them i'm not going to get it and um and i always used to think oh if only i had a sister well i don't know i asked holy spirit to come in there and you know switch things around and um, that I wasn't attached to them doing anything. And in short, they, um, they've they really come round and they, I wouldn't say they're like a girlfriend or a sister, but they're, they're great. And uh, one of them even bought me a brand new car last year. So I would not be forgiven if I complained about my brothers anymore. Um, so, I wanted to look at sentence six in paragraph four. The holiest of altars is set where one's sin was believed to be. And I also read in another place that the holiest and most sacred spot is where there once was hate and there now is love. And um, I think that's probably the biggest forgiveness thing that we can do. So, which brings me straight into the subject of my ex-husband. And I was pretty ticked off at him for quite a lot of things he did. And it's been a long, long time. And I was doing this process of forgiveness and I did forgiveness letters. And, you know, I was kind of secretly not bothered when my daughters said negative things about him. Uh, anyway, he came around last week because I'm with my uh, youngest daughter who had a baby. And um, I had decided I've got to do something about this. This is just not acceptable that it's not acceptable to just forgive him. I have to see him as, um, you know, my best friend, somebody I love. Just step up and stop the, the pettiness. And I feel I really did it. I, was, I mean, I have been nice to him always, but I just felt a shift in how I looked at him. And I felt I looked at him as pure and innocent and all is forgiven and released. And I forgave myself at the same time for judging him. And it was huge, it's huge. I mean, he's the person I probably, apart from my parents, who also, um, you know, I may have a bit more to go there, I don't know, I don't think so, but he was the person that, if I was holding a grudge, it was definitely there. So 
I'm really grateful that Course in Miracles showed me that I really have to step up and um, see every single person as Christ, every single person. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Grace. That's beautiful. Gwen and then Carla. Thank you. So I was kind of responding to Leslie mentioning about, you know, the gift of the $300. And I have, like everyone else, I've got several things really major in my life happening right now. I'm getting ready to buy the duplex where I live. This is something I, I couldn't even afford half the cost of this home. And it's really beautiful because I've been here seven years. My landlord died. I didn't want to move. And I just called one of my brothers. I was just saying, how, you know, I'm going to have to move. And he says, well, what would you really like to create? I says, well, I'd like to stay here. So I'm really blessed because I have a brother that offered to put the money for the down payment. And then I had a friend who was also interested in buying the home. And she said, well, Gwen, we dry up, draw up papers that you could stay there and live as long as you want, not pay and not have any increase in your rent. And then I showed a coworker the other side that I'm going to be renting out. And she said, well, I'd be happy to rent that. And it's like, I just cried because I felt the universe loves me so much that I'm going to be able to stay here, whether I buy it or my friend bought it. Well, as it's turning out, I'm going to be able to purchase it. And then the seller um, offered to give me 3000 towards the closing costs. And then he made a decision. So, well, you know, no, I, that's, I have to include my 1% transfer fee, yada, yada. So he was really giving me 700 And then I was like, you know, I'm not going to be angry. It is what it is. I'm being gifted this. It's just a little bit of money. And then I got a text earlier. This is like the end of last week. And he said, well, Gwen, we want to move this along. With so you just, we're just going to keep that original 3000 we want you to have. So between that, and then I was looking here in par um, paragraph three, the Sentences about love. Who could fear love and stand upon the ground where sin has left a place for heaven's altar to rise and tower far above the earth and reach beyond the universe to touch the heart of all creation? What is heaven but a song of gratitude and love and praise by everything created to the source of its creation? I'm just like in a place of such great, great gratitude. And another thing I'm getting ready to meet what I think is the love of my life. And this person has been a unity teacher. He's been a monk. He's been an attorney. He's been a bunch of different things. And we are coming together. We haven't met, but we Skype every night. And we are coming together already talking spiritual things and sharing things. And I, I, I can't even believe this is happening to me. So. And there's some challenges because they're both having fears bringing, you know, coming up to, I'm like, yeah, they have to come up to be released. And that's what happens when you're heading towards major things in life. I find the bigger the thing it's manifesting, the bigger obstacles may come to test you. So um, and I just want to say how grateful I am to be a part of this group. You are all so wonderful in all the things you share. It's so meaningful. So thank you. Oh, Gwen, I'm so happy for you. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So happy for you, my friend. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Go ahead, Carla. Wow. Okay, I got it. So I think these two things tie together. Um, I, I don't, I don't do it all the time, but I've realized that something rises when something, there's change about to happen, money, a big expense, something changes, they quit buying something I love and that it's always helpful. It's, we don't see it right away, but it always is helpful. And what I realized is, and I'll do it 
all the time, I guess, but I'm much more consistent. When I let go of the upset, of the, of the thinking, of the speaking about what I don't like and how awful it is, and that these miracles happen more and more. They happen more and more. And I think it ties in with paragraph five, the first line. It might be more than one, but the very first line, I'll start there. Where sin once was perceived will rise a world that will become an altar to the truth. And you will join the lights of heaven and there, there and sing song of gratitude and praise. And that's what I'm hearing. And even if it doesn't seem like it's something you're grateful for, I've, I've really done my best to, there's, think about it, there's 7.5 billion of us here. How can everything be wonderful for me when all, everything is tied together, right? How can that be? It's somehow when something doesn't see me working for me, the highest and best is unfolding, which is always the highest and best, it's unfolding for someone else more clearly, right? So I've just realized, and what I'm hearing more for you is when I just let go of, I don't know, aligning with the false, because I mean, love is real. That's, that's my, I mean, my go-to thought. If something happens that's upsetting, only love is real. How can, how can I be upset by love, right? So I think that ties in that, that, that where one sin, and this, this also goes with what I read earlier, sin is lack of love. Lack of love, is lack of light. Lack of light is darkness. Darkness is lack of love. It's all sin is, is lack of love. And so how can anything be happening? I know the, the poems that I read, I feel, I know it. I read them five years ago. I'm feeling it more. I didn't see it at the time, I, but that's what came out of me. And I'm feeling it more hearing the song and I'm seeing it in different people. And I'll, I'll just give you an experience. So I sent David a, a text saying, oh, we're short on bags and we're in need. And, and for some reason I sent it to this person in Germany. <laughs> and she said, you know what, Carla? I'm not sure you meant to send that to me. Maybe you meant to send it to David. It was so funny the way she said it. It was like, it was just so funny. It's just, you can find joy. You can find joy. It's there. So that's fun. Yeah, thank you, Carla. Yeah, it's that what Jennifer says. Uh, uh, quite often focus on the light and the darkness will take care of itself. And it's that the last part of this uh, section um, in paragraph six, how little is the hindrance that with, withholds the wealth of heaven from you and how great will be the joy in heaven when you join the mighty chorus to the love of God. There's that music again. <laughs> I mean, there's, it's got to be why they say sing his praise. It's so important. Who else would like to share today? Hi, Kathy. Good to see you. Go ahead, Melita. Hi. Um, 
I just figure I'd share a quick story um, talking about these miracles. Um, Leslie, I'm doing the same thing. I've been writing them down. Just, you know, have more awareness on them and I, it's fun. But I, I figure I could share a quick one. This summer, we moved into our house and um, I live in Northern California and it got like 100 degrees this summer. And um, our air conditioning quit working. And um, so we called and said, you know, when can you come? And they said, oh, it'll be three weeks. <laughs> it was like gonna be 100 degrees for like the whole three weeks. So we were like, oh my God. So I just was just thought, you know, I'm not gonna worry about it. You know, whatever, we'll, we'll go to the, we'll sit at the pool. I mean, what, what are we gonna do? So that day I went to the pool, um, well, to, to the gym, a kid swimming lessons. And one of the little other kids' moms was there and she said, we were chatting and I said, oh yeah, our AC's out. She goes, oh my God, my husband, that's what he does. And I said, oh, I'm sure he's booked up, you know, forever. She goes, ah, Melina, I'll have him at your house in 15 minutes. Literally, my husband was home, thank God. He showed up 15 minutes later and within 15 minutes and we thought we were gonna have to replace the whole system. You know, we thought, this is an old system and somebody had already said like, oh, you're gonna to need to replace it. So we thought, oh, you know, thousands of dollars, whatever. He showed up, he said, this is the best system you can buy. It's old, but it's like the best one. So keep it, he fixed it for free. So <laughs> that day it was fixed for free and we didn't need to buy a new one. And he's like, as this thing breaks, you know, just get little, fix it because this thing will last you another 20 years. So that was pretty incredible. I was like, oh my gosh, I literally needed to do nothing. <laughs> so yeah, that was one of the, the really big miracles, but I've actually just had a ton and ton and like you, Leslie, I'm just writing them down. They're so fun. Sometimes they're little, sometimes they're big, but um, yeah, so that's, that's really fun. So thank you. Thank you, Melita. Yep. Celebrating our miracles. So much fun. Go ahead, Grace. Great to hear about your miracles, Melita. And the more we talk about them, I think the more we're going to get. Um, I just want to replace the word I used when I was talking earlier. I didn't mean gossip because that has kind of a negative connotation. I meant chit chats. Yeah, you know. Words are but symbols of symbols, right? So, and um, it's funny because uh, one of the exercises that Jennifer does um, at the beginning of her workshops is a as a way for people to get to know each other is, you know, like we share a little bit about each other. And then she has each person in a small group um, turn their back and then the rest of the people are supposed to um, spiritually gossip about them. And some people have a real problem with that, you know, because of the word gossip. But I just, I chuckle at it because it's just a word. And it has no power over me unless I give it power. So, yeah. <laughs> I knew you did not mean any, uh, nastiness going on there absolutely so but good i mean our words have power as far as our intention i feel behind them and um and just the speaking of them but yeah yeah um Go ahead. it's interesting i was just listening to um john monday in one of his books on Audible. And uh, he does a whole chapter on words that we might want to think about before we use them. And, um, you know, it's words like, see if you can avoid using them because they do have certain <clears throat> connotations and it would be words like disgusting, um, things that you don't really think are that powerful, but they actually do have strong connotations. I can't think of any more of them. It kills me, he said, you know. Um, anyway, any sort of judgmental word. So now, if possible, when I feel like I, I have to say something, I usually just say, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> and then that's like very neutral. 
you know, and it's not an opinion, really. It's just interesting, which it is. Yeah, thank you, Grace. Who else would like to share today? Maybe somebody who hasn't spoken yet. Go ahead, Saskia, and then Phil. I think you raised your hand too. You're muted, honey. Does it? Um, anyway. Is it okay? Is it kosher <laughs> in that situation to, to say, um, I have an opinion on this? So you're taking responsibility for, you know. This is I, Linda. I, yeah, oh, sorry, Linda, if I could jump in. I, I think even the word opinion can be a little bit loaded for some people. Whereas if, if you said, oh, I have a thought on this it may sound more neutral than I have an opinion. Yeah, but-, but It I, really depends who you're talking to, I think. <laughs> it's to take, I just want to take responsibility for the fact that I'm, you know, having a thought that isn't, isn't kosher. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like you you can you can own it. You can say I have an opinion, or yeah. you can say I have a preference. You know, my preference might be, um, you know, or here's how uh, I have experienced it. Um, I I wasn't suggesting that I would say the thing, but just that I would indicate. That I had an opinion about it. Yeah. But maybe that's it's I know it's it's not as yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I because sometimes I feel like a <laughs> dancing skeleton. I sometimes I feel like um it's like the word hate. You can say that you're frustrated or like the word anger is what I meant. You can say that you're frustrated, that you're annoyed, but those are just um, watered down flavors of anger, you know, and annoyance and frustration is basically the same as murderous rage. So check what is going on? What is going on? Why do I have this sense of uh, this thought, this opinion? And, and just check in with yourself. Sure. Yeah, thanks for bringing it up, Saskia. So um, by now I've forgotten what it is. <laughs> I should, I should. <laughs> it's preferable to say. Yeah, there you go, preferable, preference. Yeah. yeah, I I'm, I have a preference. That doesn't mean that I have to um, subject anybody else to what my preference is. It's just, it's my preference. Mm. No, but the initial thing we started off with. Um, opinion. Opinion. Yes. I, no, that you suggested, not me. Oh, yeah, I suggested, I believe, preference. No, the, I, I can't remember who suggests, sorry to get bothered, who suggested in the first place. Was it um, gossip? I'm asking for the thing that is, is best to say. Instead of all that, somebody was saying, or, or to not. <sighs> I think Linda, um, it was what yeah, Linda Kay was Linda suggesting. Kay. <laughs> yeah. Linda Crawl, if she 
who remembers what she said and can speak. Oh, I, I was simply offering the word thought, but it's, it's thought. actually interesting. What, right. what, what, it's interesting what Saskia brought up because Thank she got me thinking because of her question, I realized since I started Jennifer's coursework, which was in July, I'm learning, I need to keep my mouth shut about a lot of things. Like nobody's actually asked me all my opinions or asked me my preferences or even asked me to participate with a thought. <laughs> and I thought I was always supposed to tell my preferences, my opinions and my thoughts. And now I'm really working on active listening. But I think it's a wonderful question, Saskia. Yeah, I agree. Thank you, Linda. I'm glad you remembered that. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that's the one thought. Thank yeah. you. That's, yeah, I, I will adopt thought. Thank you. Thank you. And, Phil. and not say what it is, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Phil, and then um, Carla, and then Melita. Yeah, thanks for this rich discussion. Yeah. And, and like Saskia, I forgot to, why I put my hand up. <laughs> and, and so the, this is a different perspective. <laughs> and this is my perspective about this. And the... Uh, Paragraph one, number three, nothing in boundless love could need forgiveness. And my perspective, it doesn't matter what I use or what words I use. It is for me to remember I am the boundless love. And it does not need anything more It because it's, such ease and grace in that knowing and what what keeps me in my own perspective stuck is being so married to what i think and and this is when i say what i think is not just about others it's what i think about sin what i think I, how things should be or should not be. And that, that, is the, that is what needs the letting go off for me. And be in that boundless love that knows no bounds. And it, it is given to me, not because of what I do, what I think, what I don't do. It's, it's there. I only have to embrace it. And that is what I need or I want to let go of. And that is the forgiveness part for me. Just remembering my innocence, remembering that each one of us are boundless love. And one is not more loved than the other. We are all the love and that's all that is there and you know it kept on saying to me okay and this line that i had highlighted nothing in boundless love could need forgiveness and it said talk about it and i'm like i have no clue what i'm going to talk about it. and I, it was like you know you'll be given what you are supposed to say and I said, hey, that's why I said, in my perspective, I've forgotten what to say. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Thank you, Phil. <laughs> and I love the, the holy zipper idea that Kathleen put in our chat. <laughs> Use the holy zipper. Uh, Carla, then Melita, then Kathleen. <sighs> well, I think it was very appropriate what you shared, um, Bill. <clears throat> so let's see if I can tie it together. 
if only love is real. I've, I've, I've realized this. It's not even I that's realized it. It's just, it's the, where spirits having a, spirit, which is truth, love, whatever, having a human experience. And I know for myself, I get caught up in the human experience like that was me. You know, that that's what I am or whatever. And like my choices, my words even, but so this is really key. I, I, I've been hesitating to say it because I've realized that, that when judgments come up or thoughts come, come and go, whatever, I should think they're mine. No, I am the chooser. I get to choose which thought I accept or extend. And that, that's really a big key I've discovered in this world with, with me, right? So is it so many, I, you, I got caught up in the, my choices, my words that they were me. They're not us. We are the truth. We are love. What we are is it's something arising to be brought to the light. See it? Let it go. That's the forgiveness. Let it go. The dark, let it go to the darkness or whatever. It's lack of light because that's what that's what anything less than love is. It's so challenging in my life, but I've been given those experiences. And if you're willing to do it, you will be given those experiences too. And look at those experiences, not for what the mind tells you they are, the furnace breaking, it's costing a lot of money. It's looking for somehow the miracle that unfolds because of it, you know? So I know, I don't fully live it yet, but it's going to happen. It's going to happen where... I don't live in the love or acceptance of peace every moment. Because there's 7.5 billion of us here, and there's many, many, many people not choosing the light, not choosing love, choosing the opposite. And it, all thought is shared. It's going to come in your mind. Your choice, your choice moment is what you choose. And really, there is no choice because there is only love, right? But we do have free will. We can choose the darkness, the lack of love, what we're going to call it, the upset, or we can choose something else. And it doesn't matter. I'll be given experience after experience after experience. That's what this life is and this illusion is it's a practice to choose love more consistently because I can't be taught what love is because I am that. What I can do is choose it more consistently. So I don't know if that was in the reading, but it's there. <laughs> That's so much. Thank you, Carla. Lita. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, Carla, that was beautiful. Um, I, I also want to thank you, Carla, because I took Lisa Natoli's class this weekend and that's what she was talking about. You know, we're not our thoughts. Um, and I was really grateful, Carla, that you've really opened my eyes to that this year. So I feel like I could get more out of it, even that that concept already existed for me. Um, I'm all, I also want to share, I'm doing her 40 day, the 40 day thing Lisa Natoli has, it's for free. I just want to make sure we knows about it, which is like not telling your stories and, you know, handing things over, like we're saying, 
um, which I'm really excited about. I didn't know about it, I just found out about it after her class. Um, but I also wanted to share about not talking. I tried something last year where I tried not to talk and you know, I have little kids. So I thought, well, how am I gonna tell them, you know, whatever? I didn't need to do anything. I mean, I really realized, cause I do like to talk. Um, I talk, I could talk 1%, you know, <laughs> and get accomplish what needs to be accomplished or whatever. Um, so yeah, I think that's uh, always a lesson for me is um, listening more, not, not needing to use all those words that I think I need. So yeah, I'm hoping that 40 day thing will help with that also. So, thank you. Knowing it is so, thank you, Melita. Kathleen. Ooh, we only have five minutes. Um, I was just thinking about what you said about Jennifer having people get together and talk about each other behind their back or whatever you, you brought up. Um, that, thinking back to, you know, the live, the last live thing where we, you and I and Paul were together in, with Jennifer in New York, up, upper st upstate New York. And my memory is that she had us get in little groups and intuit about each other, which, which was really fascinating. It's like we just like got into another space and, and then we wrote down or said what we've what, what came to us about the other person. And then, you know, then we kind of had, you know, we got to talk about whether that felt right to us too. That's my memory of that and what a fascinating process it was. And um, let's see, for myself, um, now that I'm not right in a relationship with a, a man or a woman, whatever, like not right in a loving relationship day to day, I find that my anxiety has shifted onto uh, raccoons and opossums and um, I was going to write in the, the the whatsapp all I want to know is the raccoons and opossums are taken care of because I feel like I have to feed them or they're going to starve and I'm just like what Jennifer says become curious about why these things come up like don't get down on yourself just like hmm so to me it's like a free-floating anxiety and lack of absolute belief uh, in the course like really uh, uh, so that's just where I am now. So like, I'm just praying to the Holy Spirit to know that those creatures are taken care of, even though I live in a place where there's practically no open land anymore, right around Tampa Bay. It's just all humans, humans, humans. Uh, so anyway, I just think it's interesting that, you know, I, I can't focus on Paul right now. So now it's, ah, I got to focus on a raccoon. It's a little less in my face, although it does come to the door and not kind of knock. <laughs> The squirrel climbs up the screens like, feed me. But I know I'm creating it and it's a pretty beautiful world. It's, it's a world where I know, actually know everything is, is happening for everybody's good, including the animals. And so I'm okay with that. I'm kind of amused. Uh, and I still, you know, am praying to know that everyone is taken care of. And I appreciate everything everybody's saying today. Um, how each word I'm saying, if I was speaking in another language, wouldn't mean a thing to anyone. It's like we attach meaning to each word coming out of our mouths and what we're hearing. And that we don't have to accept the thoughts in our minds. Yep. Anyway, thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Kathleen. Linda Kay, bring us home. Um. <laughs> This is for Kathleen's benefit. I'm a raccoon mama. I don't know. I have to try to not be so covert as having my breakfast. I'm a raccoon mama. I've been taking care of raccoons for pro at least probably more than 15 years in our home in the middle of San Francisco. So mine are urban raccoons and lots of urban squirrels and the sorted birds. I did have a possum, and, uh, but only one in all the years I've been here. But that was really cool while I had the possum. So I, I, uh, I also have to work on those thoughts at times with really any animal that um, what is my role to support them and what is their role to experience nature <laughs> and, and be, be God's creatures. So, I have stepped back from my highly active involvement with raccoons, as in I, you know, would touch them and hand feed all the babies and 
you know, stuff I would never recommend other people do. Don't touch raccoons. <laughs> it's not necessarily safe. But um, I just wanted you to know you're not alone and you're not crazy. It's, it, it's a cool thing to have happen where you fall in love with God's creatures, whatever they may be. So, yeah, I don't have children, by the way. So that explains my thing with the raccoons and the squirrels and all the other creatures. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Linda. <laughs> uh. So ending us uh, with laughter and smiles. Next week, uh, we're going to continue in chapter 26, uh, do section five, the little hindrance. So, and uh, I'm sure that'll be interesting considering he says earlier that there is no degree of difficulty. Um, so little hindrance, big hindrance, it's all the same, right? And I'm going to read um, my Pathways of Light Insights for workbook lesson number 320. Can you believe we're 320 already? Only 45 days left in this year. My Father gives all power unto me. God is love, and within love is all power. Love extends itself or all power to all that is. All that is, is love. Love's extension is called creation. Love's extension is called the sonship. The sonship is one. It is not many in reality. So all real power lies in love's oneness. As we are willing to open to the truth, we open to all real power. As we are willing to open to the truth, we receive a correction for all our false ideas of what could never be in reality. Letting go of a false sense of power through individuality is our salvation. Individuality is really weakness. When we think we are separate individuals, we feel vulnerable and experience guilt, fear, and loss. Returning to the truth returns the awareness of all real power into our minds. As we open to the truth, we get a taste of God's infinite peace, infinite joy, and infinite strength. Love's power lies in love's oneness. We are part of love's oneness. My Father gives all power unto me. Each day my practice is to open to this power and not deny it. Each day my practice is to accept God's will for me. Each day my practice is to go one step further in accepting the truth. God's son is limitless. This echoes the same statement made in the what is the last judgment section that goes with this lesson. As God's son, we cannot be limited by a body. As we fully accept and recognize our father as our source and the self he created as our identity, the body ceases to have meaning and it simply fades away. For most of us, the body seems real, very real. We believe the body's senses give us information about what is really happening. Yet the body is a false image and can only give false information. All that we have perceived through, through the body's eyes is false. That is why forgiveness is not only possible, but inevitable. God placed in our minds the source of true perception. That is not limited by the body's senses. It is this true perception that will set us free. It is this true perception that shows us that the son of God is limitless. It teaches us that the son of God is our identity. God's final judgment is that all our false images, all our false ideas could never be real and could have no effect on his son the extension of himself. This is his grace. The terror we seem to have inflicted on ourselves could never happen. As we are willing to bring each false idea to the Holy Spirit and to our minds, to his correction, we move toward the full acceptance of God's will for us. 
we open to the full acceptance of his limitless peace and limitless joy. Let me today accept God's gifts by bringing all my thoughts to the Holy Spirit for him to show me what is real and what is unreal, what is true and what is false. Thus will I recognize that all God's power is given unto me. Amen. <laughs> Aw, look at the puppy. Mm -hmm. Oh, say bye. Can you say hi? Oh, he's so <laughs> adorable. Look. He's Thank so you. Adorable. He was a little restless, so Aww. he hopped up here. Can you say hi? <laughs> I hope you have a great day. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Yep, let's break up with ourselves <laughs> and just be Bye. one. Love you all. See you soon. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Robin. <laughs> Bye for now.